is gonna be the most chill haul ever like very low energy tonight guys just bear with me hello 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 welcome back to my channel i am monet and you are watching life is monet it's the end of the year and i have made a lot of changes to my shelves i have rearranged my shelves i have unhauled a ton of books and i have purchased a ton of books in preparation for what i think my reading taste will be in 2022. this haul will include a lot of the books that i purchased just throughout the last remaining months of the year since my last haul and a lot of those books are actually already on my shelf and so you guys will see me plucking and picking from here and there on my shelves in the background as we go throughout this video because i'm just going to be officially showcasing them as the newest addition to my book collection. So first up we have House of Leaves which I think starts off following a tattoo artist that's looking for a new apartment and one of the apartments that is available to him uh, I believe the tenant in that apartment recently passed. That's really all that I know and very vague on actually what this book is about but I'll know more when I read it. The next three books are adult science fiction books that was sent to me by Orbit and that is going to be Far From the Light of Heaven that I believe is a new release just came out later in this year because I think I received this book in August or September so I'm pretty positive that it's already out by now and I actually don't know what this is about I just know that it is adult science fiction and that it is set in space. And then I have Inhibitor Phase by Alistair Reynolds as well as Terminal World. I have no clue what these books are about. I don't read enough science fiction and I plan to change that in the year of 2022. And every time I go to the bookstore, Alistair Reynolds takes up so much shelf space. Like they have an entire shelf nearly to their own with the amount of books that they write. And I have no idea if these books are even in the same world. I just know it's set in space. I hope it's set in space. I feel like it's a space opera. But one says that it is a Revelation Space Universe novel and the other one doesn't have a series affiliated with it. But if they're not in the same series, then why do all the covers look alike? I don't know. If you've been reading these books or you've read from this author, let me know in the comment section down below where I should start and how they're all in relation to one another because I have no clue. And then I have The Bear and the Nightingale, which my friends tell me should be a five star prediction. And they were all kind of shocked that I have not read this book, but I really had no interest in it, like at all. And what's weird is that this book came up in a rant. We were on Zoom and everyone was kind of discussing why they hate this book. And I was not participating in the conversation because I haven't read it and I have no idea what it's about. And they were like, Monet, why haven't you read this book? You would love it. And I'm just like, why would you tell me that I would love it after you guys just spent 10 minutes talking about how terrible it was? But apparently, no matter how terrible it is, it's perfect for me. I don't even know if I should be offended, but I'm holding off all offensive feelings until I actually read the book. Because if I don't like it, then I'm going to bully them. Because why would they tell me that I would like a book that isn't good? And then if I do like it, I'm still going to bully them for not liking it. So it's a lose-lose for them, you know? The next two books were also sent to me by Orbit. And that is going to be The Mask of Mirrors as well as The Liar's Knot. I expect to really love these books. And I'm saving them for a time where I just really want to be truly immersed in a story. And I just feel like this is going to be like the perfect adult fantasy read for when I want to take my time and go slow and just read at my own leisure. In these books, we follow this con artist, I believe, by the name of Ren, who is trying to basically trick her way into a noble house to secure a future for her and her sister. But it says there is a corrupt nightmare magic beginning to weave its way through the city of dreams. It sounds really promising, so I'm really expecting to enjoy these books, but I also plan to read them slow. And then we have Lancelot by Giles Christian. This is a King Arthur retelling that everyone says has really amazing writing. And I'm really excited about that. I'm sold on that. Literally even people who say that they didn't enjoy the book all rave about the writing. Like they all discuss how amazing the writing is. And I was sold off just that alone as well as like, I really like this cover. I like the color. Maybe that's it. Maybe I was sold on like the color. I purchased these books quite a few months ago 
but I'm not sure if I ever got a chance to haul them. And that is going to be The Henna Artist and The Secret Keeper of Japur. These are not books that I typically gravitate towards, but I've just seen so many people raving about them. People who have very similar taste to me in other books. And I'm a sucker because I feel like if enough people who like what I like, like something, then the chances of me liking it is also really high. And I have FOMO. I don't want to miss out. A few months ago, Barnes and Nobles was doing 50% off on one of these. I think I think this one was 50% off. And when I seen it and grabbed it, because I was like, that's a really good price. I just grabbed this one too, because why not? Then I have this edition of the Starless Seed that I had someone customize and send to me. It has a blue ombre into black and it has the signature key, B, and sword on it. It literally came out perfect and I am in love with it. And then this book was mentioned for the books that I wanted to get to before the end of 2021, but I never officially hauled it on my channel. And that is going to be Still Striker, which is book two to Sky Hunter. And this is the actual conclusion of the duology for Marie Lou. And I'm patiently waiting for us to get another announcement for when we will have more books put out by her. In this duology, we are following this refugee in this country that is trying to stop this all powerful federation from taking over. Over, and the Federation actually does uh, scientific experiments on some of the soldiers and make them kind of like a hybrid. Like basically they turn their soldiers into weapons. And one of the so-called weaponized humans actually escapes the Federation and they get caught up with a refugee and we just follow them as they try to come up with ways to stop the Federation. And then we have Once Upon a Broken Heart. I'm a sucker for really pretty covers and I love the cover of this book. And also I was surprised to see that it was really like raved about. Every time I see this book people are giving it five stars and I've seen it on like the Goodreads Choice Awards and when I first seen the book and it had such a pretty cover I didn't gravitate towards it because with YA books with really pretty covers especially when it has like a heavy romance plot to it I don't necessarily trust because I feel like they're always like a risky purchase because those types of books are not consistently good and I just felt like that about this so I was pleasantly surprised to find that people actually loved it and that made me want to purchase it even more because I'm just like let me find out that the inside of the book is actually just as good as the outside of the book. And then Barnes and Nobles had it for 50% off during their Black Friday deal and I was just like okay like I can do it for $10. For as long as she can remember Evangeline Fox has believed in true love and happy endings until she learns that the love of her life will marry another. Desperate to stop the wedding and to heal her wounded heart Evangeline strikes a deal with the charismatic but wicked Prince of Hearts in exchange for his help he asks for three kisses to be given at the time and place of his choosing. But at the Evangeline's first promised kiss she learns that bargaining with an immortal is a dangerous game and that the Prince of Hearts wants far more from her than her pledge. He has plans for her, plans that will either end in the greatest happily ever after or the most exquisite tragedy. I was also sold on the word tragedy because I love a good tragedy. Don't be surprised, another set of books that I purchased mostly because of the cover. Actually, most of the books I'm gonna name in this video I purchased because of the cover because I'm a cover whore. And that is going to be We Hunt the Flame and We Free the Stars. People actually really do enjoy these books though, but I don't know what they're about. I don't know. Someone just told me that I would enjoy it and I like the covers enough for me to risk the money on a purchase. That's honestly what happened with these. And I think I got them on a three for two. Like, if I can get a book with a really pretty cover on sale, that's a good day. It's a really good day for me. Next up, I recently upgraded to hardback versions of the Legend series by Marie Lu simply because they are going to TV and I'm very excited about that. And I have hardbacks in all of the books by Marie Lu except Legend and Legend is my favorite. So I just had to make them all match on my shelf, of course. I definitely want to grab them before they redo the covers with those TV actors on them because I'm not a fan. I'm someone who appreciates the original covers and not the redos. If if you are unfamiliar with the Legend series, we are following two characters by the name of June and Day, and it is kind of set in a forward dystopia uh, version of America wh where America has pretty much been fractured, and there is the Republic, and then there is like the outer 
coast of America, which is like where California and stuff is. And June is like this prodigy in the Republic. And there is Day who is like a troublemaker and like a rebellion. And June's brother is killed. And the Republic is determined to make June believe that it is Day who actually killed her brother. And so she sets out to hunt him. And the more she learns about Day, the more she starts to question whether or not the Republic is actually telling her the truth or if there's something running deeper in the conspiracy. Next book I purchased again because of the cover but honestly like look at the cover guys this cover is stunning this is called revelator it is actually a gothic i don't know if like if it's a horror or a thriller but i know it's gothic we have this character by the name of stella stella goes to live with her grandmother and she discovers that their family has like this history with this entity or like deity which is like their family's god something happens that makes stella run away and when her grandmother passes she has to return to go to the funeral and her grandmother recently adopted a 10 year old girl and so she kind of gets caught up in that and just taking care of her but she discovers that the girl is a lot more powerful than she thought and that the ties the family has to this ancient god or deity is turning out to be much more destructive than she cares for it to be the only other gothic read that i've read this year was the death of jane lawrence i would classify that as more gothic than horror or anything but I enjoyed it enough and so I'm looking forward to this one but even if I don't like it I won't be mad because I'm still gonna keep it solely because of the cover. The next books I have is an adult fantasy trilogy and that is going to be The Thousand Deaths of Artaban, The Shattered Realm of Artaban, and The Last Lies of Artaban. This follows a thief who is hired to steal a crown from a king and basically things go left of course and that causes this legendary thief to have to save human civilization mankind the world the universe who knows he's gonna have to save something okay i actually plan to start reading these really soon the next one i purchased when i did a fire chapter tag and that is going to be the ember blade this follows a character by the name of Aaron. his father was executed for treason and then him and his closest friend was thrown into prison and then they are rescued by a man who has like sworn fealty to him but the man also doesn't really like him. There is a revolution that is occurring that would free Aaron's people, but they need to get this Excalibur blade or the Sword of Kings, which is the Excalibur of his people. And it is locked in this impenetrable vault and they need to steal it for the sake of the revolution. Sticking with adult fantasy for a bit, we have The Black Prism, which is book one in the Lightbringer series. And I also have The Blinding Knife, which is book two by Brent Weeks. We are following this guy who's like the most powerful man in the world. He is the high priest and emperor, a man whose power, wit, and charm are all that preserves a very tenuous priest. Yet prisons never last and Gaio knows exactly how long he has left to live. When Gavin discovers he has a son born in a far kingdom after the war that put him in power, he must decide how much he's willing to pay to protect a secret that could tear his world apart. On the back, it says that he has sold over 4 million copies so that's very promising right I have two kind of like reading taste doppelgangers and one of them is actually not on YouTube anymore but every time I see them on Goodreads we have the exact same ratings for books like across all genres which is very weird but no matter what in romance and YA in sci-fi in mystery thriller horror we always have the same rating and they gave these books five stars each and so that's very promising alone like I just know because of that that I'm gonna love these books just because this person gave it five stars we rarely ever disagree on books. Then we have Lost in the Neverwoods, which is a Peter Pan retelling. The Wendy in this story, her brothers have been missing for five years and she meets Peter who basically says that he can help her locate her brothers. And so they embark on this journey to locate her brothers together. But someone said that this book ends on a bittersweet note. It end They actually said that it ends with a tragedy and that was enough. That was enough to give me to purchase it. I'm not going to lie. If this book ends happily, I'm going to want my money back. I'm going to want my money back. I'm reading the entire book for the sole purpose of being crushed at the end. What's on the back of this book is actually very interesting. Wendy's heart thudded violently in her throat. Cold sweat beaded on her skin. Her nails bit into her palms. Harsh, ragged breasts billowed white before her. 
The trembling in her spine began to awake. At the base of the great tree, the roots formed a small opening, like an entrance to a dark cage. Rotten leaves brushed past the gaping mouth, and just below the sound of their ruffling, Wendy heard quiet voices murmur. She knew this place. Everything in her screamed for her to run. Wendy needed to get out of here. She needed to get away from this tree. But it was like she had no control of her body, because suddenly she was moving toward it. The hushed whispers became steadily louder as she stepped closer, one foot after the other. They were children's voices. I actually really liked the writing. Like, is that in this book? Because then I gotta make it a five star prediction. Let's just, yeah, if the writing stays like it was in the back of the book, this this is this is a five star prediction. I'm gonna have fun with this one. Next up, we have books that I purchased, again, because they have beautiful covers. <laughs> and that is going to be Fable and Namesake. These are also five star predictions because I expect to really love them simply from what I've heard people say about them. Even when someone is discussing what they didn't like about this book, it sounds like what I would like about the book. So even the people who like hated it and ranted about it still sold me on it. Does that happen with anybody else where like you're listening to someone go off about why a book is like so terrible and you're like, yeah, I'm gonna read that. That sounds perfect for me. Like, I'm sorry that it wasn't for you, but if you get out my way, I could appreciate what the author was trying to do here. Our main character in the series, her name is Fable, and her father left her basically stranded after her mother passed, and she basically has to get back to him. I think he might be a pirate, and she has to rely on someone that she cannot necessarily trust, of course, but I've heard really good things about the writing, and I think that's what sells me on it and why I expect to love it so much is because I expect the writing in the book to be really good but also like with Once Upon a Broken Heart I I'm not gonna be upset if I don't like them I'm definitely gonna keep them even if like unless they're a one star I think if I like hate them then even then I would be lying because if I hate them I would do a whole video about why I hate them and then they will still be on display so yeah meet the new permanent additions to my book collection because I'm never gonna get rid of them because I love the covers. And then we have Nolan, which is book one in the Rise and Fall, which is the newest trilogy by Michael J. Sullivan in the world where we have the Theft of Swords, Rise of Empire, and the Heir of Navrin. There is a prequel to those characters that is actually called the Rayera Chronicles. And then there's a prequel to the world, which is called the Legends of the First Empire. And then this is a sequel that occurs after uh, Hadrian and Royce leaves us and we're following the descendants of some of the characters that we've been following and that leaves us with Nolan. The proposed covers for this trilogy all look really pretty especially book three and I cannot wait for those books to be released just because again the covers like this is actually just a haul of books that have really pretty covers and I'm just realizing that. And I was gonna do a separate video too of all the book covers that I love, but it seems to be popping up in this video. So two birds, one video. I received an arc of this book earlier this year and I loved it so much that I had to get a finished copy and that is going to be All of Us Villains. We are following seven prominent families as they submit one champion to enter in the blood trials. The survivor of the blood trials who has to be the sole survivor everyone else must die but the sole survivor of the blood trials that person and their family will get to control high magic for the next 20 years until the next blood trials and the next generation and except the blood trials that's occurring now there has been a tell-all book that has been released and now the world is aware of what has been occurring in secret for the last 800 years and it's just very interesting it's such a vicious and brutal YA story and it's just a perfect Agree. like if you were thinking about purchasing this book I highly suggest it like I really like the cover of this book I know people say that they hate it but it's to my taste and one of my friends read it on audio and they still gave it like 4.5 out of 5 stars so I would suggest the audiobook as well because they enjoyed it next up we have the author of Joe Abercrombie I have the blade itself before they are hanged and the last argument of kings I have already read the blade itself 
and finished it and there is an entire reading vlog where you guys can watch my thoughts in depth but overall I did enjoy the book and I am going to read the entire series because I already own them. <laughs> After the first law trilogy we have the age of madness and that begins with a little hatred and then we have the trouble with peace and then lastly we have the wisdom of crowds and I actually got a signed edition from Barnes and Nobles that they had for their uh I think it was Black Friday so there's that. I actually don't know what occurs in these books because it would be a spoiler because I'm not done with the first law trilogy and these are like a subsequent that came after the original trilogy. And then I have Jade Legacy which is the final book in the Jade City trilogy and I got an arc of this book this year and I love this so much that I had to make sure that I got a hard copy edition to complete my collection of these books. I do wish that the hardcover books would have stayed matte. I think that that was prettier for me if we're talking about like what we like in books. I'm not a fan of like the gloss but it is what it is you know. Next up I have a bind up of the entire Night Angel trilogy by Brent Wheat. I actually don't know what each individual book is named. It just says the complete trilogy. I know that there are three books in here and it is the Night Angel trilogy but I'm not sure what each individual book is called. I think it's like the Shadows of Something. I'll put the original books here if you were to buy separate editions. I, I know it has the word shadows in it, but, but we're following this guy who's being trained to be an assassin. And that's all that I know. That's all that I know. Next up, we have The Black Tongue Thief. This is by an author of a book that I recently read called In Between Fires. It was a fun read for me and this is the same author. <laughs> and so that makes me more excited for this book because I've already read from this author before and I really enjoy his writing style and the way that he tells his stories. And that makes me feel like this is going to be like at least a four or five star for me. We have this character who is a thief and I think he tries to steal from... He tries to steal from Galva who is a knight and a survivor of brutal goblin wars and the handmaiden of the goddess of death. She's searching for her queen and after his unsuccessful attempt at a robbery, Kench, which is our main character, his fate is now entangled with Galva and common enemies and uncommon dangers force a thief and a knight on an epic journey where goblins hunger for human flesh. Next up, I have a memory called Empire and a desolation called Peace. This is another adult sci-fi series that I plan to read soon because I need to up my adult sci-fi series and this won a Hugo Award last year in the year of 2020 and every time I see it people love the series but they say that like it's very dense in terms of the writing which doesn't scare me off they just say that like it requires you to focus a lot but I've been in my adult fantasy bag and so I'm okay with that. This book has a main character who I think takes up a duty in like this space opera empire and the new planet that she travels to her predecessor died by like mysterious and conspiratorial ways and she now has to investigate how and why he died and if she may be the next victim. Then I have Masters of Sorrow which is a book that I also purchased in the same vlog where I tried a chapter. We're following a main character who was supposed to have been murdered at birth because he was fated to become the new Dark Lord and actually he ends up being raised by the people who killed his parents and he's been sent to this school to basically learn how to track down magical artifacts and prevent people from abusing powers but once he discovers more about like his fate and like what he's destined to become he's battling that then I have dreams of the dying this book is set in a world that's like on the brink of a civil war and the only person who could put a stop to the civil war before it starts is the king I believe he's the king yeah but the king is now in a coma and someone has done it to him and so our main character has to find out who put the king in a coma and how to save him so that he could stop the civil war from happening. In order for him to do that he has to go into the king's dreams. Somehow his fate becomes tied with that of the king and there are I believe some demons in his dreams or maybe the demons are like leaving his dreams and coming out into the real world. I'm not exactly sure but we will find out when I read it as usual. 
And then I purchased The Tethered Mage. This book follows a mage who has avoided being scripted into service and who is a thief, as well as an heir to an empire that is on the brink of total collapse. And their fates are intertwined to prevent whatever is going to befell the empire in this world. Then I have If We Were Villains, which is like the staple dark academia that everybody loves. We are following seven students who are like in this Shakespearean play, but they decide to play their make-believe roles in real life. But something very tragic happens and their make-believe in their real life is becoming very entwined with one another. And then we have The Goblin Emperor, which is about a character named Maya, whose father and brothers were murdered very mysteriously Seriously. and so he has to become the king in this kingdom that he's grown up very far away from and was not supposed to be uh the closest heir to the throne but with his brothers also being assassinated he now falls into this court where he cannot trust anyone and he also needs to investigate who was behind the murder of his father and his brothers to make sure that he is not next and then i have the grace of kings and the wall of storms and i've had it on my tbr for a long time and i just never got around to purchasing it but I could not believe that so many books were out in the series already and so I'm like again I don't want to be so far behind everyone and so I decided to go ahead and read these since book three is literally coming out in like a week and yeah so I want to read them as soon as possible I did not have as much time to get around to them as I thought I did so we're pushing them up on the TBR I know that these are translated works and I actually don't know what they're about because ever since a friend of mine told me to read them and I put them on my TBR I have avoided any and all reviews because I knew that I was going to read it just because Ptolemy told me to and so yeah I don't know what it's about and I didn't want to be spoiled or have any preconceived notions about it and then I have Blood Song by Anthony Ryan this follows a character named Valen who is sent off to this brotherhood by his parents and he's the only one of 10 kids who they sent away and he becomes very angry at that because he has to grow up away from the rights of his actual heritage and the more he discovers about his father and his mother he discovers that he actually has a destiny and a fate that's tied to him that may have been the reason why they felt the need to send him away two more books the second to last book we have is called winter's fury her father is dead, her uncle has stolen the throne, and now he wants to marry her off to the fallen son of her arch enemy. But Jael is a battle-hardened warrior trained to kill since she was 10 years old. She doesn't plan on being anyone's wife. And then we have our second character, Edmund Skeleton, is drunk. His father is threatening him with a wife again. And this time, he's giving him an ultimatum. Marry Jael or your brother returns from exile. If But if Edmund was ever going to choose a wife, it wouldn't be Jael. Not her, not ever. Winter's Fury is a gripping epic fantasy series that takes you into a richly woven world of warring kingdoms, mysterious dreamers, dark magic, and ancient prophecy that emerges from the shadows to weave a dangerous web of around them all I don't know like it sounds like there's gonna be a romance in here right and that the romance is gonna be like a hate to love and it's a pretty big book so I hope it's a slow burn but if it's not a hate to love what if these are just two people who really hate each other that refuse to marry and like they're doing everything they can to like break whatever prophecy is trying to bring them together either way sounds like a really good time for me I'm gonna have a great time. This <laughs> book is by the same author. I wasn't sure which one I wanted to read or like was gonna love the most. So I purchased this one as well. And that is called Eye of the Wolf. Because the gods have taken Rainier's luck, stolen it away, and now he's a desperate man, an unlucky man, a lord whose fortress is under threat from a vengeful enemy who grows stronger by the day, a lord who needs silver to buy men to defend his walls. Rainier has lost more than he can bring himself to say, more than his eyes will reveal. And now he needs something to change before it's too late. It has to because he is fated to become a king. Both of these books sound like a really good time for me and I'm excited to read them. But also can we go back to this freaking cover? Like guys. Hello uh future Monet here inserting this clip because I left out some books that weren't included in this haul but since I'm currently editing this video I decided to go ahead and 
put these in there so that they count. Um, first, I bought the Ship of Magic books, which are the UK edition for Robin Hobb. I've been wanting to continue reading Robin Hobb books for a long time, but I am anti mass market paperback, so I was never going to purchase those. So yeah, glad that I finally have these and I can start reading them right away. I also purchased Odin's Child, which I'm not exactly sure what this is about, but I know that like the, we are following three characters that are very different from one another and their fates become intertwined and if they don't figure out how to actually there's a synopsis on the back of the book please hold well yeah the synopsis wasn't really helpful i know that it's like rooted in norse mythology so yeah there's that i also have the illustrated editions of the lives of Locke lamora because this is another series that i've wanted to read for a while i've heard really good things about but again those mass market paperbacks i am finally grabbing all the books in the editions that i want them in so that i get a chance to read them i don't know what this is about i just know it includes a heist but that's all that i know and like that's all that i need to read it like a heist is good enough for me. <laughs> I also purchased uh, Anxious People and A Man Called Oof. This book follows um, these hostages as this bank robbery takes place and we're just basically inside of their head as they all process what's happening. And I think this book is about a grumpy old man and it's supposed to be sweet and heartbreaking but also heartwarming at the same time and this is an author that i've wanted to read from from a long time i feel like i'm going to give him five stars once i start reading his books but for some reason i just never got around to really grabbing them because i was i didn't want to purchase them and then just have them sitting on my shelves waiting to be read and so i waited until i was closer to a time where i felt like i was going to read them right away before i purchased them these are the first two that i purchased there is one that i'm interested in called bear town and that one one, I believe is a trilogy or will be a trilogy so very interested in that one too and then lastly is a book that I had to grab that came out today it is called sex cult nun you guys know that I love all things relating to religion and cult and this just tied in religion and cult and sex it's a non-fiction book that says it's about breaking away from the children of God a wild radical religious cult this cover guys the cover alone I would have bought it off of but Cultish was a book that I read this year that was a favorite nonfiction for me I love that book I plan to reread it and I thought that like that was going to be one of a kind special book but this one came out today and I love all the new nonfiction that are coming out about cults and like cultish behavior and I hope that that keeps happening so yeah I'm going to hand the reins back to pass Monet I just wanted to fit these in because I left them out if you are also a sucker for really pretty book covers, leave me a blue heart down in the comment section below. And thank you guys for watching my really long haul. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.